Welcome back everybody to our final series in our Faction Wars guide, joined here by none other than my man Azazel, covering the hardest boss out of all bosses, in my opinion, the Red Boss. So today we're going to be talking about Undead Hordes, we're going to be talking about Dwarfs, and we're going to be talking about Lizardmen. Uh, we do have two really awesome strats to use for Undead Hordes and for Lizardmen. And then we're going to showcase the best way uh, to get through that. Probably one of the hardest, I think it's safe to say the hardest faction, which is the Dwarfs. The most realistic way to get through it. And we're going to show you ways without having Molly as well, which is, does make it harder. But we're going to give it all to you here. So Azazel, thank you one more time again so much for joining us. The floor is yours, my man. Once again, hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. And let's go and straight jump into the actual boss mechanics. So it's the only boss without any ads because he he's cool enough not to need them. <laughs> so really, the boss has pretty much one ability and uh, one A1 ability that uh, does nothing but single hit, but I will get to it. And of course, passive. So the passive is, as you deal damage to the boss, uh, the boss gets a proportional turn meter increase the more damage you deal. So in all bosses, the faster you deal and the more damage you deal to the boss, the better it is. With a red boss, sometimes it can spell a doom for your team because he really outpaces you and causes you a lot of trouble. So he will just, he pretty much gains the turn meter faster than you are. So you need to watch out for that. Uh, like the damage, incoming damage needs to be kind of managed by you. So the boss at the very least is one-to-one -one with you because as soon as he starts to outpace in him, you, you will be in trouble. And the reason for that is he has on a four turn cooldown, he has the AOA ability that removes all the debuffs from him, stuns four people on your team and applies a true fear on another person on your team, takes an extra turn and always hits the person with the true fear on. Now, the true fear will be applied randomly. So you have zero control about it. You cannot resist this. It's not resistible abilities, any of them. Stun and true fear. And the true fear will be applied for one turn, same with the stun. It's a one turn. So because he takes extra turn and does a hit, it's effectively a three turn cooldown ability because of the extra turn. And why is that a problem? Is because his A1 ignores defense. It hits very hard and it ignores defense. So making essentially making defense a pointless uh, stat on any of your champion. In other instances, managing the boss is easy because uh, the boss only has a one ability where he just chops your team down, but you can kind of guide him like with a clan boss stun. Like people can manipulate clan boss stun on the proper target all the time. Uh, same, can, same, same can be done with the red boss mechanic. So before I will go into the factions, the way to do that is always to have a lowest HP champion as a lead. This way, the boss will always select the lowest HP champion to target. And of course, as a position one, we all know, gives the most threat to the enemy AI. So the AI will always target that champion with few exceptions. Uh, we will get to that later. There's a couple of buffs that might prevent that from happening. So let's jump into the lizard man. Now, lizard man is one of the few factions that has absolute insane legendaries. If you have any legendary and you most of you who do in 21 should have rosin by now use rosin use him hands down any other lego will just make this uh, easier but rosin is a staple of the faction then for the epics 
because Broadma is fusible, if you lacking epics, let's say you don't have Jarek, you, you just never pulled him, use Broadma uh, to have a champion that can resurrect and provide the increased speed. It's a 15% speed, but still it counts because it applies to a total speed. He's overall a, a pretty decent support champion with like a mini freeze on his A1. When Azazel says use Broadma, that's because you can you can fuse Broadma. So it's not like, um, you know, you have to get lucky to get that champion. So just keep that in mind that that's a fusible champion that has been in there for like over a year already. So you just need to be able to do that. Yeah, as I mentioned, he's a fusible. He never goes away. You can fuse five of them if you want. The best option, though, is, of course, to have Jarek. Uh, he is a, a monster of support. And the beauty about him, if you never happened to have him or needed him for the clan boss, because back in the day, many people used him for the clan boss, you can keep him level 50. He will still do everything you need from him because of this passive. So every time an ally loses 20% of their max HP in one hit, even if it's AoE, he will apply a continuous heal on. Also, he has the ally protect and defense on all allies. And of course, the attack down when you're going to get to the boss, because boss damage is based on the attack. Attack down is actually very crucial skill. And of course, last but not least, aura. HP aura is a big deal, especially against this boss because defense is relevant. The other honorable mention from Epics is Basilisk. And with the Basilisk, same thing applies like with the Bushi, except he's even better. You can put a stun set on him because he attacks all enemies. So you put a slow stun set on him with a low HP, let him die. He comes back and he has a block damage buff. That's even better than the Bushi. So he, he will just sit there, get all the damage, and then he can take the turn, stun someone. So overall, he can be used in such a fashion. If you're really struggling with champions, Jarank can be used, but this is like a last ditch option of a champion. Usually people use Jarank in like middle stages. Like stage 13, 14, 15, they get him to like level 50 or something, and then they just toss him in a vault. Overall, he's not good. From the rares, the only one who stands out, Haruspik. I, I have no idea how to pronounce his name to this day. So, fills the turn meter, increases the speed on a three turn, and he also has the revive of only one ally though. And just a tiny uh, baby poison on his uh, A1. And because it's a two-hitter, once again, War Master will allow you to get additional damage from him if you want to do that. From the uncommons, I've seen people use Zorus in, like, once again, middle stages. You put a stun set on him. He always attacks all enemies on A1. But his base stats are horrible, so... Later stages, I will advise you not to use him. Super difficult to keep him alive. Now, having said all of that, so the faction overall is pretty underwhelming. There's a cheese in this faction. Whether through the fusion or through the shards, do not be discouraged that this is absolutely useless champion. You can put him and his little buddy on the same team. And what happens? This... Passive ability. Every time Cool Sworn will die, Cool Lord will take a turn, revive him to 50% HP, 50% turn meter. This is even better. And they will do this cheese over and over again. So what people do is they put Cool Lord in shield set. You can have him at level 50. No need to, to go further because his stats are insane, even at level 50. And then make him reasonably fast, put a school sworn there, even without items. I prefer to put him with the items so he can at least take two hits from like random mobs. And then that's it. You have him, your bait, school sworn, Razen, 
and two other dudes. And that's it. You just abuse this mechanic of uh, continuous uh, revival endlessly until you beat the faction. And it works flawlessly on stage 21. In fact, what I've seen people do is they have school lord for school sworn. And the reason they do it is to stack the odds of true fear on the boss so it doesn't let on land on the school uh, school lord. So one of the school sworns will get the true fear, get chopped down, school school lord picks them up, and it just never ends. They just keep attacking the boss until they kill. You so, actually you mean to tell me that somebody actually did that before? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Use yeah. four rares. The same four, four rares. rares. Yeah, four school sworns. Um I think wow. all of them were level no, one of them was level sixty for the probably war master. Uh war master and a school lord. And I think three level 40s or level 30s, uh, that's it. Not even booked, like nothing. Just cheapest, that's amazing. most reliable way to beat the faction. Awesome. And I think School Lord was uh, reasonably fast. Not even fancy um, gear, just some speed gear that the person had. And that's it. That's the whole cheese of the faction. So if you have School Lord, go to the sewage, it's it's stage two of the campaign and farm it up that's that's it that's and, the... uh yeah and uh what i wanted to say basically is to to everybody that makes videos talking about don't fuse this champion don't fuse that champion always keep in mind that every champion in this game has a use at one point or another this champion here was a fusion and he was a joke of a fusion because he was a pretty easy fusion to get and a lot of people were very against fusing him, you know, and look now, he's your ticket to, to stage 21 if you don't have any of the really good legendaries in this, um, in this faction. So keep in mind that if you have the resources, fuse ev and make every attempt to get every champion that's guaranteed to be given to you because having a champion that's guaranteed to be given to you versus relying on shard RNG are two huge things and as the more champions come in this game the more the harder it's going to be for you to target the champion that you want to get out of shards yeah exactly this is a good point just to touch up on him i didn't have any of these uh legendaries only resin when i beat the faction and uh i fused school lord specifically for the faction wars as soon as i saw him and I saw this interruption with his little buddy. I told everyone in my old clan, guys, fuse him. You will not regret it. Everyone who could did it. We all beat Faction Wars, Lizard, Lizard Men, within two weeks. Because we just couldn't get the keys fast enough. Wow. And that's it. But then later on, just to touch up on him, even though it's not really Faction related. How many people started using him in Arena Reset? As, as, as a stall. So now we have a useless legendary with two uses in the game. That's big. Many people don't even realize how useful that is. A, a champion that dominates two areas of, of the game. There's not many legendaries that actually do that. 100%. So uh, if you can fuse champions, always fuse champions, no matter how bad they look anyways I, I want to show a quick footage uh, it's going to be a very fast run yep um usually it is for all my best champions so lizard men thankfully do not have valkyrie wave in fact the they have the easiest wave uh waves prior to the boss so it's super easy to um to get to the boss so as you see i'm, I'm burning through the waves in like was it 15 seconds each <clears throat> I still have school, by the way, uh, as you see, I have school lord and his buddy uh, on my team uh, just to showcase the mechanic of the boss. Hopefully, he will actually be hit. Let's get to the boss right away. So now we're the boss, no ads, just a so solo boss. Unfortunately, the fear went on the Draco, but it doesn't matter. As you saw, boss attacked school sworn, school lord picked him up. And next turn, the boss attacks. 
Skull Sworn again. Cool Lord picks him up and rinse and repeat. Uh, this is what you do over and over again with the cheese. So that's awesome. Very easy three stars on the faction. Because if you have your school lord fast enough, he will just pick them up fast enough for, for you to get the three stars. Anyways, let's move to Undead. So with Undead, you have a lot of options when it comes to the legendaries. And believe me, you can even use Crypt and Growl. As useless as he is, he can, be, he can be used in this faction. I personally used him for a long time because for a long time, he was the only legendary that I had. But beyond that, we have absolute insane lineup with the way martial art was re redone. I mean, look at this. We have Beck, we have Rodos, we have Mashal, Nethril, uh, Harvester Jack, Tifi. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, actually, I know that Saito also de deals what pretty high damage. Yep. Uh, very, very small amount of content on him right now. But uh, I don't know how he performs in Faction Wars. So once again, I don't know. Never seen it. Uh, so I'll reserve my judgment. But Skartosis, like there's a. Uh, all legendaries, uh, other than Suzerain, I think. And actually, Crypt King is like last ditched effort if you want to progress. If you can avoid, don't use him. But everything else from the legendaries are insanely good. Not just good, but they're just super good. You cannot go wrong with them. So I will go straight to the epics. And once again, for the epics, uh, there's a wide variety of champions that you can use. Gorgorup comes to mind immediately. Uh, just overall, a great support, uh, reviver, healer, buffer, you name it. Seeker, very widely used champion. Uh, he is a superstar of clan bosses lately. A lot of people use him in arena. He's one of the few champions that actually has a 30% turn meter. Um, he has the provoke on A1. Uh, he takes a lot of turns because he takes extra turn on his A2. Passive de increased defense. A lot of things going for this guy. Mausoleum Mage, until stage 21, even though I've seen some people use him there, I personally advise against it. He doesn't provide much um, because his uh, increased defense and block debuffs, you can align it with a boss, but it's super difficult to, to do. Uh, Zelata is actually a good support for all stages other than stage 21. Hexia is decent now. She actually deals insane amount of damage. So you can use her as a DPS. Dark Alhain, once again, okay. Uh, from the rares, Grinner stands out. Uh, good revival uh, on the fourth turn cooldown. Places also shield. Seducer, uh, also a very good champion. And Doom Screech, once again, 30% turn meter on a three turn cooldown. So, very good champion from the rares. Now, Undead also have, other than the, having the red boss, they also have a problem with uh, having a Valkyrie wave. So, it's an issue for any team that has a lot of buffs. That's why actually Sifi is not that good nowadays uh, on that stage because she puts three buffs. There's no way you can outspeed Valkyries before they will take their turns. So it's a, it's a big problem. So what do you do if you don't have any of that? Well, there is a key strategy with uh, Undead, just like with uh, some other factions. And it involves two Stitched Beasts. You don't need to level them up. You can keep them level 30 for all you care. One Lich, any choice of speed buffer. So Gorgorup or Seeker or Sifi, well, Sifi is already uh, kind of, uh, you know, it creates a lot of shortcuts, but let's say you don't have Seeker or Gorgorap, but you have Lich. In this case, use two Stitch Beasts, try to get two Liches, and a choice of Mashalt, Nethril, Harvester Jack, or Betelkazar in stun set, or Skartosis in stun set. 
So lots of options to, to deal with this. So what happens? Let's look at the kit. On A3, Stitch Beast decreases the turn return meter by 100%, guys. It's super easy to get a 200 speed and 200 accuracy level 30 champion nowadays. Especially with the, our great holes, most of us do accuracy before everything else. So you load them up with speed, accuracy, and you're good to go. Same with the liches. Same ability right here. It also places a speed, a decreased speed debuff on a target for two turns. Preferably, you want to book one of the liches. This is the least effort you need to do. And in order to, and then, as I said, Badalkazar and stun set and Skartosis and stun set. This is to kind of stack RNG in your favor. I mean, if you have Mashalt or Nethril or Harvester Jack, this is the perfect solution because they apply the true fear on the waves. But what happens with this cheese is you essentially keep draining the turn meter of all enemies, one after another, all the time. Especially if you have a, uh, what's it called? The evil eye, <laughs> all oh, your yeah. champions. You just need one champion with a war master to kill the boss. So you get through the waves in the same fashion. Occasionally, you will get resistance, uh, resisted and fail. So you need to kind of redo. This is where the RNG comes in place. But essentially, you come to the boss with four useless champions and one champion that will deal the damage and you just keep draining the turn meter because you deal so little damage the boss passive never really matters and all you do there is sit for about 25 minutes or so and uh, go through this uh, ridiculous activity but the best part about this it requires almost no investment the best part stitch beast don't even need books they don't need masteries, nothing, just the gear, and that's it. So if you have three of them, that's even better, because in my opinion, it's better than the Lich. But if you have, like, let's say, two Liches, two Stitch Bits, Beasts, and uh, Seeker, this is the best team, or Gorgora. And as I said, a bunch of uh, legendaries who can either equip stun set or provide additional uh, debuffs. And this is the cheese for the nightmare uh, necro faction. It works. I personally did it, guys, on someone else's account. The person was struggling with necro faction. Uh, they beat the faction, but they just couldn't get the three stars. And uh, fortunately for me, they had natural on the account. So I used one lich, two stitch beasts, seeker, and natural. That's it. Seeker was level forty. I didn't even level him up. <laughs> No books, nothing. Just no books on anyone. Not even natural. Just, just, just five uh, raw champions uh, that just three-star the faction. And uh, wow. once again, be ready to fail because occasionally RNG will fail and uh, someone will not get debuffed or their turn meter drain. But overall, it's it's a viable strategy that requires almost no investment other than having several champions and that's about it that's the only cheese i know by the way for that no, faction, that's, that's so. perfect that's perfect i think that covers up a uh, undead horde i think uh this is if anybody's having trouble the man did it himself for an account takeover again guys if you're having trouble with anything that we're mentioning here come to our discord Post in the Faction War section. Show us what champions you have available. We're going to recommend you the proper builds. We, we don't want to make these videos like, like hours and hours long. We just want to kind of give you the go-to strat. But if you mm -hmm. need specifics, we're always going to be here for that. So um, let's go ahead and get into the... We saved the best for last, like usual. The hardest uh, faction in the game.
let's assume we have no legendaries, even though I have them now. But let's assume we don't. So what do you do in this case? Well, unfortunately, this guy, before I will go over the ability of everyone, uh, this is the new champion he just dropped. He looks promising with this ability and uh, his uh, decreased speeds and attack and some poisons. But he was he's not he's not tested yet. I'm actually in process of leveling him up and seeing if he can be actually viable for the faction. So this way, maybe having two of them, I don't know. So uh, we shall see how the test goes. But at the moment as it stands, um, there's no rare that can help you beat the faction. This is the only faction that makes rares absolutely useless when it comes to the boss. It's just sad fact. Trust me, I tried. I tried Bulwark. I tried Runic Warden. It just doesn't work. No matter what you do. So it all comes to the epics. And the only known way to beat the faction without Molly, because Molly actually opens a lot of avenues um, of, of beating this faction, because she provides that clutch uh, resurrect, is to have Rockbreaker, two Rearguard Sergeants, one Gala, and Grizzle Yarl. That's the only way, guys. Unfortunately, as it is. So what happens is you make Rockbreaker your lowest HP champion. You you need to book this ability. That's another thing with it worse. They require investment. So this ability needs to be booked because you need to CC the waves. When you get to the boss, this is clutch passive. So boss will hit him most of the time. And you you want to kind of why do you need to rear guards? Uh, we will go to our rear guard kits, but rear guards will apply a light protect with a continuous heal one after another all the time. So essentially everyone has a light protect, which means the boss deals half damage. And they also have the A2. So oh, we're done with this guy. He's your bait. He does nothing but stands there and receives hits. They both have decreased attack. Tons of books. Um, if you're lucky, you don't need this. You only need these two. But, you know, RNG sometimes doesn't go our way, so you need a lot of books. This is the key. Your Gala will be your source of damage. Uh, the best way is to put her in some Savage set and have just a bit more HP than your Rockbreaker. And then Jarl. Uh, will provide this clutch ability right here. Uh, he will block the debuffs. You know, unresistible stun and true fear that the boss applies. Well, now you don't have to worry about that because he will always applause, apply this. And the key with a team like this is to have all the speeds aligned in such a way and deal just enough damage so the boss always takes a turn after your five dwarves. So your five dwarves go as a unit, they all take one turn after another, and then the boss does his turn, rinse and repeat. So every three turns, this ability is off the cooldown, you always protect it from the stun, it means you never lose uh, a single turn because of the stun, and you always move together with the boss. And you have to hope that your between your rear guards and Jarl, you constantly can put the decrease attack down. Because if there's no decrease attack down, the boss will kill you anyways. And you just repeat the process over and over again until you get that perfect RNG run. When everyone stays alive, you deal just enough damage to the boss, and that's it. This is without Gala. Now, with the second RNG, Rearguard Sur Sur Surgeon, you can keep her at level 50. This is the only resource saving that you can get. Now, if you have Tormin, that's better than Rockbreaker because you have an additional life. So you kind of have, you can have, you can buy more uh, turns uh, with him. With Molly, it's pretty straightforward. She replaces one of the rear guards, one of the, uh, bo both rear guard and Rockbreaker. So this way you can actually have 
two DPS channel, uh, cha uh, champions on the boss and just quickly kill the boss. Because with a molly, you have room for mistake. But other than the molly, this is the only way. I actually, back in the day, I wrote a whole long as guide what to do when you have no legendaries in the faction. And what I described is basically it. Unfortunately, dwarves are the way are they are. So I think um, I think that dwarves are going to be the gatekeeper for most people to get Lydia. Yeah. I think that they're going to be the, this faction is going to be single handedly the ones that uh, mostly everyone's going to have everything else completed, but this faction due mm -hmm. to the fact that you need specific epics, you know. And a lot of resources and a lot of luck to get those. Um, a lot of newer players are not going to have Molly. God can only hope what the RNGs like to actually pull Molly, you know, outside of a 10x event and not have infused her in the past. So this is going to be a really, really tight one. If you do have Molly, uh, one of the first people that actually defeated this uh, faction, they used a very specific set uh, from Ice Golem, Reflex set. Yeah, Molly the one with that the reduces the cooldown. Yeah, Molly with the reflex set definitely really helps out a lot. Reflex set in general can actually help you in a lot of the different progressions all throughout faction wars, just because it gives you that RNG that may come in when you really need it. This is the kind of this is gonna be the one uh area faction that you're gonna like really have to go crazy RNG wise to keep trying and trying and trying and trying again. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing yep. that I will advise all of you, before you go crazy, trying like crazy in this faction, come to our Discord, show us what you're working with. Let us at least let you know that you have a chance before you go crazy, like enraged towards the game. Because maybe, you know, by then we can see new new things come up with that, new, uh, I mean, rare dwarf that, yep. you know, uh, Aver. Yeah, maybe we can see some new things come out with him. Maybe there's new things that we can figure out, but um, definitely use the resource of having us there for you and really trying to, uh, you know, uh, get our opinions on it because that's what we're here for at the end of the day. This video is just, again, to introduce you to possibilities, but when you need guidance, we're here as well for that. And there's a lot of people inside my Discord that, you know, do account takeovers, especially Azazel and a lot of other people as well that would love to actually help you through this and get it done for you if, if you need that much help. So just know that we're all here for you. And uh, Azazel, do you want to play a video clip of this? Because I'm sure a lot of people would want to see it. Do you have one without Molly or no? Uh, unfortunately, no, I don't have. Because I fine. beat Show the one. faction worse a long time ago. Yeah, so show can you show one with a molly or no? I can show them one with a molly, yes. Uh it's uh it's still hard even with molly. It's not like it's a joke with molly. Pretty straightforward. So the first wave, uh as usual, you take care. I actually have two galas here because I was speed farming the faction at that point. Is this a uh, three star? That, you know, we get more glyphs. Is it a three star uh three star attempt? Uh, yes, yes, it is three stars. Nice, nice. That's what okay. we want to see. So, so as you see, we we just club in through the first wave, and then it's pretty straightforward because I have two galas. But in this case, actually, one of the galas acting as a rock breaker, so she is a bait. The white gala, I actually didn't mention that. White gala is so good, is when you guys will look at her kit. She has multiple abilities that. Uh, help her heal of the hits. Mm -hmm. She ignores defense, so she deals a lot of damage without defense down. And she places shields on herself. So she just, like, you know, this super lady with a fiery uh, hair that just does it all for herself. So the waves are pretty straightforward. Uh, Molly just uh, provokes them, but it, without Molly, it will be done either by Torment or rock breaker doesn't matter. I still have one rear guard, and I still have uh, Jarl in my team. The last few uh, turns on wave uh, two, as you can see, I manualed. I always do that. So by the time I hit the boss, all my abilities are off the cooldown. This first uh, stun is actually crucial. This is the most crucial point in the beating the boss with three stars 
if things go wrong during that swap, most of the time you have to restart. So here we are on a boss and my all my all my abilities on cooldown. So I go deal some damage with Galas. Uh, extra, she also takes her extra turns. So another damage. My actually a life protect was off the cooldown, but it, it's okay because I have Gala. Oh, sorry, Gala, uh, Molly. So there you go. And now it's back on auto because I can afford to do that. I don't need to beat this stage anymore, but technically you want to do it on manual anyways. So all the proper abilities are being used. But as you see, RNG is favorable. So Jarl landed his attack down. And then on the next... The next uh, swap... The boss will uh, the boss here landed on the proper gala. She was already super low HP, and I got lucky and true fear landed on that gala, so she died, which is absolutely fine. So this is the key. Luckily enough, based on RNG. Boss was baited properly towards the same target all the day. But you can do it manually. This is what you essentially have to do in the faction. Um, otherwise, um, you know, you, you kind of screwed, to be honest. As unfortunate as it is. So, um, I think uh, we covered everything. Um, yeah, yeah, this was uh, very, beasts. very, very informative. I do wish I had this resource when I was trying to uh, finish up Faction Wars. But you, um, one thing that was beautiful that what you did, Azazel, is that not only did you walk us through every single faction, but you gave us a lot of budget options, uh, knowing that the majority of the player base in this game is not a whale and does not have almost every epic in every faction. You did give a very... Uh, wide open range of different options that people can use uh, to get through these uh, factions and at least for three or four of them you gave them like very very you like to use the word cheese I don't like to use the word cheese I like to use the word creative thinking you know because at the end of the day that's what it really is you have so many different combinations of things that you can do in this game and sometimes there's really easy hacks to get through different uh, uh, stages of this faction war so I think it was awesome. I think we we really hit it on the nail. And my goal out of this series, and I had one goal only, and that was to get thousands of people, Lydia, that don't have her now, you know? So I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. I ask all of you for one thing and one thing only. Please uh, hit up uh, Azazel's Twitch and uh, send him a follow. And always come to my Discord and come at us with any questions whatsoever. We're all here to help. Azazel, from the bottom of my heart, man, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done here, brother. Uh, you're welcome. And once again, as Manibal said, guys, hit the links below, especially Discord. There's a bunch of people who know at least as many things as I do. They tried different combinations. They have different champions they can advise on that you might have. And, and just overall... Just to have fun. We have a fun community there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Azazel, thank you so much again. And you guys all have a great evening, day or night, wherever you guys are at. And appreciate all of you watching this until especially this